Okay, again. <laughs> so welcome to the Sunday program. So as I mentioned last week, uh, today's program, we're going to focus on uh, the connection, the body-mind connection, and uh, how the practice of yoga or certain aspects of yoga breathing and uh, the exercises uh, can help enhance a person's meditation practice. So we all know the, the hindrances, the five hindrances are the biggest obstacle for uh, being able to meditate and especially to attain deeper states of concentration and also developing uh, the vipassana insight awareness. <clears throat> and uh, sleepiness is one of the biggest hindrances, especially for uh, beginners, as well as uh, restlessness. Uh, and so both sleepiness and restlessness uh, can be greatly uh, helped by the practice of, of yoga. Now, meditation, you know, happens between the, uh, the brain and the spinal column. So our life is dominated or we, we live by experiencing things through our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, uh, skin, and of course the mind processing all that information. Uh, and all those uh, sensory vibrations coming from the senses go f you know, along the nervous system, which is uh, the main part of it, is located along the spine, where that information then is, uh, reaches the brain and you have cognition. So the important aspect of meditation is keeping the spine straight and also keeping the head uh, lifted up. And ideally the, the back of the head and the spine should be in a straight line so that if you put a, a rod, let's say down through the top of your skull and then going through the hollow core of the spinal column would reach down to the base of the spine in a straight line. Uh, ideally that would be the optimal uh, straight uh, posture, but uh, very few people are able to uh, maintain that kind of a posture for very long. And it's because primarily uh, we haven't exercised or done the, the, the right exercises that help keep the muscles of our back uh, strong enough uh, to uh, maintain that kind of posture. And also gravity is always pulling us down. Uh, and, you know, the head is sitting up there, weighs uh, several pounds on top of the, the spinal column about the size of a 25 cent piece. So all that weight is constantly being uh, pulled down by the, the power of the gravity. So we have to exert a, a kind of a opposite uplifting counter force in order to keep the head and the spine straight. Because again, people don't have the strength and, and also because they're not mindful of the body for one thing. So they're not even aware that, you know, they're starting to, to slouch like that because their mind is lost most of the time in their thoughts or sort of half asleep. Uh, and so they're unmindful of that in the first place. And then even if they do straighten up, uh, it might be a little bit painful because uh, the, the muscles to keep the, the back and, uh, straight or haven't been exercised, so it may feel painful. So to relieve that pain, they, they tend to you know, slouch or uh, want to lean up against the wall. But all of those things impede the... Uh, the flow of the uh, 
life force, in, the, in yoga called the prana energy. So that's why even in the Buddha's instructions and in meditation, he said the first thing a person should do is, is sit down cross-legged and, you know, put one leg up here and one leg up here. Now, ideally, that was traditionally, that was the yoga posture. And it was very common in those days. And uh, so uh, a lot of people could, you know, they learned to sit in this posture when they were even young because there weren't so many chairs back in those days either, not for the, the, the common person. So, uh, but anyway, the Buddha mentioned after sitting down and crossing the legs to keep the back straight. Uh, and for the importance that uh, that's where meditation happens is uh, in the spinal column and to the, to the brain where you register alertness. So that's the, just in brief, uh, that is a, a one of the aspects uh, or relationship between the, the body and the mind. And the body affects the mind and the mind affects the body. And also, uh, so, you know, and in the outside world, in the mind is also a reflection of our body to a certain extent. Uh, and so if we're if we're slouching in a slouching position, that means our mind also is probably not very focused and centered in the present moment. It's either lost in its various daydreams or kind of half asleep. Now, a lot of people, when they meditate, they're, from the meditation point of view, most people are in a state of half sleepiness, although they think they're awake, but uh, they're not really awake in terms of uh, meditative uh, awareness or alertness. So, and then also the breathing. And the, the breathing in the, the mind is also related. And the, the quicker you breathe, usually the more agitated the mind is, or the more thinking uh, that is going on. Because the brain requires a massive amount of oxygen uh, to function. And so if we think a lot, or worrying and so on, uh, or emotions, and uh, then that requires more oxygen. So you uh, will breathe uh, faster. You need to breathe faster to get more oxygen in to uh, maintain that kind of mental activity. And because people are usually slouching most of the time, most of the time in the daytime, people are not you know, really uh, sitting straight, because if you're at your desk, you're normally slouching a little bit, or you're in the car, you're sitting and slouching. If you're, you know, at home, just leisurely you're sitting in a sofa, or even at the dinner table, uh, people are generally kind of like slouching. So uh, because of that, the breath tends to be more uh, short and shallow, because of the contraction of the of the rib cage, the, the, the body can't, the lungs can't get in sufficient air because the slouching kind of contracts the rib cage so that it can't really expand very easily or very well, fully. So it can only ex expand a little bit and therefore you have to breathe faster uh, in order to get enough oxygen. So I'm just uh, kind of saying all that to lay the groundwork of why, you know, learning to sit straight uh, and erect uh, helps to, you know, keep the, the lungs and the rib cage and also the nervous system in its optimal uh, functioning so that one can also take uh, deeper breaths. So most people take shallow breaths, again, as I just mentioned, because this contraction, and then it's become a habit over a whole lifetime for most people. But uh, when you sit straight, you'd be amazed that you can actually, you have to retrain it, of course, and with some practice, but you can learn how to take a deep, slow breath and breathe in, uh, starting the, the air in the lower lung, and bringing it up through the middle lobes up to the uh, top of the lungs. 
because the lung is actually a, you know, a, a elastic organ, and it uh, it has different compartments in it. What are called the, the lower lobes, intracostal or mid middle lobes, and the high uh, high lobes that that reach all the way up near to the collarbone. You know, and the top of the lungs are kind of pointed like that. So those uh, those top of the lungs, as they expand, they you know they go up almost all the way up under the collarbone, or almost. And so you can feel uh, that uh, kind of unique sensation. Because normally people don't breathe in their upper uh, lungs because by the force of gravity, air normally comes down into the bottom part first and then gradually uh, overflows there's different compartments, but they're connected by, you know, the, the breathing uh, tube uh, with, and it has uh, bronchi or, or uh, the, you know, tubes that go into each of the, branch off into each of the, uh, the lung areas. Although in the middle, there's only one larger kind of uh, lobe because the heart takes up much of the area where a second lobe would have Ben. But uh, for the ease of, uh, you know, learning it, you can just imagine that there's two there. So, so learning how to uh, draw the air from the lower lobe up through the middle to the top of the lungs is, uh, you know, very important for the way we get air up into the upper lobes. Because the Breathing in these lobes affects the circulation also to different parts of the body. So breathing in the lower lobes helps to affect the flow of uh, life force, prana energy, uh, and blood down to the hips and the legs and feet. Breathing into the middle part of the lungs affects all the major organs in the trunk of the body, including the heart muscle and, and all the other organs that people experience a lot of problems with. And then the breathing in the upper lobes affects the circulation to the brain and all the organs in the, in the head, and also the, in the shoulders and the arms. So uh, there's something called three-part breathing or rhythmic breathing, which is sort of the ABCs of pranayama. Now, those of you who have studied yoga you know, the, the pranayama is a very popular thing and there's all many kinds of pranayama. And they, they all do uh, certain special, have certain effects on different parts of the body or different uh, biopressures and other, other things within the, uh, the body system. But this uh, rhythmic breathing or what is called complete breathing is sort of like the ABCs of breathing, you know, the fundamental foundation. It's one of the most important things that I learned, uh, you know, in my study and practice of, of yoga. Uh, and it's also very effective for meditation. And it's a way of, uh, that I encourage people to uh, use as a type of anapanasati or the concentration on breathing. But normally when uh, you know, teachers teach the Anapanasati, they'll tell you don't control the breath, just let the breathing uh, be in its own uh, sort of normal uh, rhythm. But <laughs> for reasons I've already explained earlier, that normal rhythm is actually abnormal, you know, because of the slouching posture and, and of the, of the long, kind, long time conditioning of taking short and shallow uh, breaths. So the yogis uh, understood that learning to do deep, slow breathing is also more beneficial to the whole body-mind system. It brings a more harmony 
uh, into the whole body-mind system. Uh, and also learning to hold the air into the lungs a, a couple of seconds or longer to uh, allow enough time for all the oxygen in the lungs to get into the bloodstream and be carried out to all the cells and tissues of the body. So uh, this what I call three-part breathing or rhythmic breathing, uh, it has four parts to it. It has the inhalation and uh, let's say you try to inhale for uh, four seconds just to inhale or let's to keep it uh, the arithmetic a little bit more easier. Let's say, uh, you know, three seconds. So to, for a three second in breath, you'd like be breathing in two and then three, and then you would hold the air in the lungs by making a little swallowing action in the throat. It helps keep the air in. You hold the air in for uh, one or two seconds, and then you slowly let the breath out, ideally letting the breath out from the lower lobes first, and then the middle lobes, followed by the upper lobes and then a short pause at the end after the breath has gone out then a brief pause and then again the next in breath and hold the breath in one or two seconds or even longer three seconds and then out breath you can let the out breath out i mean uh, all at the same time. Ideally, you let the first part of the out breath, uh, the air from the lower lobes and the middle lobes and the upper lobes, but uh, it's, it's not easy to get that coordination in the beginning, so don't worry about it too much. Just sort of let the breath out, but however it wants to go out, but uh, you know, kind of slow it down and kind of give an extra little contraction at the end to get all the air out. So it's good to get all the air out also. Because usually when we breathe, you're breathing in and then the oxygen goes into the blood and then you're breathing out, but most people don't breathe out fully. So residual air, all the air doesn't get out. So you have kind of like dead air that's depleted of oxygen that's there that hasn't gotten out. Uh, so at the end of the out breath, you give a, a, you know, a slightly you know, extra little contraction at the end to feel that last bit of air go out. And then, then breathing in again, holding the breath in a few moments and then breathing out. So, this is uh, how I usually, for those of you who've been <laughs> participating in uh, these programs the last uh, four or five months, or have known from my teaching elsewhere, that uh, you know this is the, what I emphasize because I find it much more beneficial uh, than just uh, telling a person just sit down and watch your breath and not giving them any specific type of instructions or they, you know just say focus on your nose tip or something don't control the breath most of the time people will either <laughs> start going to sleep or uh, they'll they'll space out or they get lost in their thoughts because it's not enough to hold their attention so uh, so that's what i'm going to to go over with you uh, in this uh, yoga session today and because, you know, the first, also the first phase of meditation practice is learning how to get grounded and centered in the present moment. Because developing present moment of awareness, that means concentration in the present moment and awareness, is the, the really the, the, the starting point, or you know, might not, not only the starting point, but the middle, uh, uh, also of the meditation practice. And then once the, the mind is centered and grounded in the present moment, then that's when you can more effectively start practicing 
uh, mindfulness or let's say vipassana meditation being aware of the various types of sensations or sounds or thoughts that are coming and going through uh, the awareness but in the mind is grounded in the center in a stage of concentration that it's not being uh, too distracted or disturbed by what it might be hearing and feeling uh, you know going on through the nervous system but this is really where vipassana meditation starts so uh, so in the session today i'm going to uh, be uh, we're going to be standing up because we, we might have been sitting down already for some time and then go over this three-part breathing and then do a series of exercises and we've already done some each week i you know i do a few but there's a lot more in a series when you have more time and then uh, doing a, a laying down kind of relaxation awareness meditation uh, taking advantage of that uh, having that awaken the cellular vibrations in the body and using that as uh, that a grounding uh, point or to, to keep the mind centered feeling the that organic aliveness and various sensations it's a very pleasing and relaxing sensation it's like the pt actually when you can feel that it's equivalent to the to the sensations you feel when you when you have pt when you're starting to enter the jhanas and then after the short laying down meditation we're going to sit up and, uh, and do a sitting meditation so I hope that some of you uh, have, uh, you may not have a big room such as this <laughs> in your living room, but a uh, place uh, if you have a yoga mat or a carpet and uh, if you can sit down or you can stay sitting in a chair if, you know, if you're not able to sit down on the ground, you can sit in a chair. Some of these exercises may not be able to do very well sitting in a chair, at least uh, the first ones. Uh, so, go ahead and uh, stand up. Okay, so we're going to go over this, uh, what we call three-part breathing as a training because, uh, you know, usually doctors or others will tell you breathing is, is just automatic and, you know, they never tell you much about really training your breath or controlling your, your breath, really. 
So, except when you go to the doctors and he tells you to breathe in and hold it in for a moment, or you're getting an x-ray or something, but normally they, they hardly ever mention these things. <clears throat> it's, it's a shame, but anyway. So, uh, first of all, I want to go over and see if you can feel these different lung areas and to, to understand that you can actually, with your concentration, you can direct air into these different uh, lobes and, uh, and learn to gradually uh, you know, uh, breathe in slower uh, rather than usually we just breathe in and you know, hardly a second and, and so on. So if you place the hands sort of underneath the the rib cage, the last lower ribs underneath. And the diaphragm is the main muscle used in breathing. So you want to get a conscious control over the diaphragm. So when you breathe in, the diaphragm moves downward, uh, creating a vacuum. And that's what draws the air into the lungs. And because of gravity, it comes down into the lower uh, lobes first. And then on the out breath, the diaphragm moves back up like this and expels the air. So the diaphragm, you know, in breath, the diaphragm is moving down like that. On the out breath, the diaphragm is moving back up like that. So that's the kind of uh, sort of sensation we want to try to feel, although you won't be able to maybe actually feel the diaphragm, but what you feel is the stomach being kind of pushed out and downwards on the in-breath. And then on the out-breath, you kind of exaggerate it in the beginning. Uh, kind of like suck the stomach in and up. Uh, and then again, push the stomach out and downward. So we're gonna to try to do that a few times. And if you can, try to take two or three seconds just to breathe in, or let's say two seconds in the beginning, uh, just to breathe in and then hold the air in the lungs for at least one second, and then uh, gently pull the stomach in and up slowly uh, on the out breath and do that several times uh, until you kind of get the feel of it. So the in breath, Gently pushing the stomach out and down. Hold the air a moment. And the out breath, gently suck the stomach in and up. And in breath, stomach out and down. Hold the breath. Out breath, pull the stomach in and up. Again, in breath. Out breath, pull the stomach in and up. You now place the hands at the side and try to do that without using your hands. Just concentrate down in the belly and breathe in, gently push the stomach out and down. Hold the breath a second, and the out breath, pull the stomach in and up. Feel all the air go out. Let's do that a few times on your own, in breath. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Now just relax. Don't try to deliberately breathe, but let the breath come back to its own rhythm. Just feel the body. Feel your feet pressing the floor. You feel the effects of that breathing in the body and mind. 
Feel your arms and hands hanging at the side. Okay, now that was fairly easy, uh, doing that abdominal, what is called abdominal uh, breathing. Now we want to move to the middle lobes and focus our attention in the middle chest. You try to hold your hands against the, the, the just on top of the breast area, not, not down here, but a little bit, and keep the elbows up a little bit. And so for the mid chest breathing, you'll feel a, a kind of an outward movement because the rib cage is being expanded outward. Like if you're playing an accordion and you know, the accordion you know, gets pulled out like this and on the out breath or you know, the, and the accordion you know, goes back in to produce a different sound. So you know, that's the kind of movement you want to feel and also slightly up lifting and outward movement. <clears throat> so uh, we're gonna not try, some air still might go down here, but uh, focus behind the hands and see if you can't feel that expansion of the middle chest. So again, uh, in breath, hold the air, and the out breath, In breath, hold, out breath, in breath, out breath. Now place the hands down to the side and continue doing that. Just focus in the middle chest, the same middle chest breathing, in breath. Hold. Out breath. In breath. Out breath. Once more in breath. Out breath. And I'll just relax. You just feel the effects of that in your body and mind. Your mind and body becoming more calm and relaxed. Just let the breathing go back to its own uncontrolled rhythm. Try to feel the subtle vibration. You know, even the middle chest breathing is not that difficult to do because normally we do get some air in the lower and middle uh, lobes during the day. But unless we're doing some strenuous exercise or running or something, then probably we're not getting much or any air into the upper lobes. So for a lot of people, the upper lobes have become kind of shrunken. <laughs> because of non-use or they've lost their uh, elasticity or they've become a breeding ground for bacteria or other uh, impurities uh, which have uh, helped to closet, uh, clog them up, uh, the, the high alveoli uh, air sacs within the lung. So it's like, you know, a damp closet, if you have a never open a closet, you're in a humid place, and then you open a closet, and the 
clothing might have some mildew on it or something that no circulation. So because we don't use the upper lungs, uh, a similar kind of thing can happen in the lungs and it becomes like breathing disorders, whether it's emphysema or some other uh, uh, problem. So we need to flush out the upper lung. So this is probably one of the most important aspects to learn. And that for that, you raise the fingers up just under the collarbone. Keep the elbows lifted up. So it's just a short distance between the nose to the upper lobes. And just focus there behind the hands and breathe. Some air still might go down in here by old habit, but just see if you can notice an extra uh, unique kind of lifting movement in the upper lungs toward the base of the neck. Okay, so breathe in, hold the air, and the out breath. In breath, out. In, out, once more in, out. Lower the hands down to the sides. <clears throat> now try to take a few more breaths into the upper lobes, just with your concentration power. Just focus your attention there at the base of the neck and imagine that you're breathing the air straight through your throat. Hold the air. Out breath. Then relax, just feel the whole standing body. Just let the breathing go back to normal. <clears throat> just try to feel that stillness of the body and mind. Okay, <clears throat> now normally we don't breathe in those areas separately like that, but one can. Uh, let's say if you were to have a punct punctured lung on, you know, on one side of the lung, then you know that you have other lobes that, <laughs> that you can also breathe in. So that was maybe you know, nature's uh, pro protective uh, kind of adaptations. Uh, because if the lung was just one empty bag and it got punctured, then basically you'd wind up dying real quick. But because those other lung areas are, you know, they're sealed off compartments. Okay, anyway, now we want to put that all together. And in one breath, try to put some of the air into each of those areas. So 
to learn that, it's, uh, we divide the air into three equal parts. That means in the length of time that we breathe, and also ideally the volume of air that we're taking in. So we we'll use the count of three because that's easy. And so while counting one, you'd be breathing into the lower lobe. And then it's not separate breath, it's one continuous breath, but you have to, it's like you, if you open up a gas cylinder very slowly, you know, and you start to open it, you, you hear that. And you keep turning it like that, rather than turning it real quickly and just get a, you know, like that, okay? But that's the way most people breathe. So it takes some training. Uh, so I'll be counting to three and uh, try to follow the movements of my hands also. You may not be able to keep that up, but anyway, as best you can, let's see if you can do that. So we're gonna, uh, you know, a count of three breathing in and hold the air in the lungs for about two seconds. And then you move the hands back down to the stomach for the start of the out breath. So the in breath starts going from the bottom to the middle and the top. And then while you're holding in the breath, you move the hands back to the bottom for the start of the out breath and try to release the air first from the abdominal lobes then the middle lobes followed by the upper lobes. So use the hands in the beginning again. So I'm gonna begin counting. So go ahead and begin breathing. One, two, three, hold the breath, move the hands down, out breath, one, two, three, in breath, one, two, three, hold the air, out breath, one, two, three, in breath, one, two, three, hold the air, out breath, one, two, three, in breath, one, two, three. Now let out the breath and let the hands rest at the side. Now try to do it on your own without using your hands. In breath, one, two, three, hold the air. Out breath, one, two, three. In breath, one, two, three, hold. Out breath, one, two, three. In breath, one, two, three. Hold the breath. And out breath, one, two, three. Now completely relax, don't force the next in breath. Just let the breath come in whenever it wants to. Don't try to make it long, just completely relax. Just feel the whole body. Just be aware of the, the uncontrolled rhythm of the breathing. It probably goes back to shorter breaths, but that's okay. Or it may still want to breathe that way. And if, it, if so, that's good too. And just be aware of standing, standing, 
stem. So now doing that three-part breathing by itself is, is highly beneficial and can be done just you know, by itself, either in a standing position or in the uh, seated, uh, seated position. Uh, as long as you have your back and, and neck straight, you can uh, you know, do that breathing. But now we're gonna combine that breathing with some movements, the, the same ones that I've showed you each of our meditation periods, usually the same ones. And they're designed at, uh, you know, to, to flow with that kind of deep, uh, slow breathing. And so we do a movement while breathing in, and then we hold that position for a couple of seconds. And then we return to the starting point on the out breath. And then we repeat it two more times. Uh, again, coordinating it with the breathing. And the idea behind that is that, you know, as you're breathing in and getting a lot of oxygen into the lungs, then at the same time, you're stretching the body. And then that stretch helps to draw that uh, oxygenated blood out to the you know, the extremities of the body and also the prana life force is not only the blood that's moving with the breathing, but it's also the prana life force or, uh, you know, Chinese, they call it the chi. Uh, but basically it's like, the, you know, the electrical energy of the universe, however you want to conceive it. Uh, but it also flows through uh, uh, the body and what it helps to keep the cells of the body alive, not only uh, the oxygen, but uh, the, in combination with that. Uh, but, you know, modern science doesn't know much or anything about that. But uh, anyway, the yogis understood the, that. So uh, anyway, we're going to first do some standing exercises and then go down to some sitting posture and then uh, some laying down exercises. Uh, and almost all of them are using this three part breathing. So it helps to develop that breathing as well. The more you do it specifically, then the more the body will get used to it and gradually find yourself breathing that way, even you know, by itself, as long as you're sitting straight. Okay, so. <clears throat> On the next in-breath, raise the arms over the head. You can try to feel the air moving up as you raise the arms moving up and interlock the fingers, turn the palms up and straighten the arms. And straightening the arms also pulls the air up into the high chest. And then on the out-breath, turn the palms down and touch the top of the head. Again, in breath, turn the palms up, breathe in, feel that air going up into the upper lungs. Out breath, touch the top of the head. Once more, in breath. Now release the fingers and on the out breath, lower the arms back to the sides. Relax. Gently close your eyes. Just try to feel the outline of the standing body. Try to feel the increased body sensation, the tingling sensation, the pulsations especially in your hands and fingers. Just 
Just let the thoughts come and go in the back of your mind. Just keep remembering the present moment of standing, 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 feeling the body sensation. In this pause between the different exercises, we're not trying to do the three-part breathing. But then when we start this next movement, uh, well, this movement helps to breathe that way. So the next exercise on the in-breath, push up on the toes and raise the arms up over the body. Face the hands about six inches apart and stretch upward. On the out breath, lower the arms back to the floor. It causes the air to go out of the lungs too, and the heels back to the floor. So let the body help the breathing, the body that helps the, the lifting. So the in breath, like breathing it, filling up a helium balloon, the body rises up. Stretch. Out breath. Again, in breath. Out. You relax, gently close the eyes. Just feel the feet pressing the floor. Just remember standing Standing, feeling the subtle sensations. Okay, next we're gonna do knee bending. If you have stiff knees or painful knees and you're gonna be careful with this or just do it as best you can. Try to keep the feet parallel to each other, about six inches apart. And on an in-breath, again, push up on the toes while lifting the arms up parallel to the floor. And on the out-breath, bend the knees and lower down, balancing on the balls of the feet. Come down as far as you comfortably can. And a deep in-breath to push up. All the way up on the toes. In out breath. In. Once more out breath. In. In the out breath, lower the arms, relax. Just feel the increased heart beating. Just feel the other body sensations. Any aches or pains. Prickling sensations.
You now spread the, the feet apart, the wider the better, at least three feet or more. We're going to do side bending, keeping the hands at the side. Breathe in. On the out breath, bend over your right side and let the right hand kind of slide down beyond the knee if possible. Try to bend straight over the side rather than coming forward like that. In breath, lift up. Then the other side, the out breath. In. Out and to the right. Alternate sides. In breath. Out breath. In. Once more to each side. Out. In, out, in the out breath, relax. Close the eyes, feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the hands touching the legs. <clears throat> feel the sensations in the body. The clothing touches the skin of the body. And now we're going to do the lateral twisting of the spine. In yoga, we try to flex the spine in all the different ways, you know, forward and backward and to the side, and then also laterally the, the twisting. That way, the, you know, the spinal vertebrae the, get the, you know, all those ligaments and muscles get loose and the, you know, the blood can, can you know, really permeate the, all of the, you know, the spinal column and so on uh, in the nervous system that's located there. You're okay, holding the arms out to the side. We're going to breathe in. Then look at your right hand and on the out breath, twist around to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going back. On the in-breath, come back to the front. You can let your feet turn with the body and then go to the other side, the out-breath to the left. Try to keep the arms up level with the floor. In-breath, back to the front. And again to the right, out-breath. In breath, to the front. Again to the left, out breath. In breath, front. Once more to each side, out breath.
Breathing breath to the front. Once more to the left, out breath. In breath. And the out breath, lower the arms, relax. Just feel the sensations in the shoulders. Just feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the increased heart beating. Letting go of your thoughts. Okay, now we're going to do the backward and forward bending, keeping the legs apart. Try to take them a little bit wider apart. The wider, the better. And let the hands touch the front of the thighs. And you be careful with the back bends, when, especially when you're, uh, when you're lifting up from a back bend, a rush of energy could kind of come up the spine and, and cause the body to shake a little bit or even the feeling like you're going to black out or something. So you don't want that to happen. Don't breathe. The bend back too far the first time. Maybe to try each time with the second and third repetition, try to maybe bend back a little bit more for the first time. Be careful with that. Okay. So breathe in. On the out breath, bend forward, let your hands slide down to the knees the first time. But keep your head up, looking out straight ahead, and flatten the spine to try to make it like a flat, like a tabletop, to get the hump out of the spine. Sort of lock the knees, keep the legs straight. On the in breath, lift back up. And then move the hands under the buttocks for support and gently kind of let the head go back and on the out breath, gently bend backwards, not too far the first time. Keep the eyes open, look up at the ceiling. And carefully lift up with the in breath, lift up. And on the next out breath, again, letting the hands slide down the front of the legs. Let the hands come down further below the knees. Still keep the head up, legs straight. Feel that stretch in the back of the legs. And the in breath. Coming back up, hands under the buttocks. Again, the back bend out breath. Try to go back a little more. In breath, come back up, be careful. And the third time, let the hands come down as far as you can to the feet. Still keep the head up. Leg straight, hold that a little longer, feel the stretch. The muscles of the back of the legs. Just let the breath be shallow when you're holding the position longer. Don't try to control the breathing. Okay, when you're ready, carefully lift back up. 
And once more, the back bend, be careful. And lift up on the in-breath. And just relax on the out-breath, feel the whole body. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel any subtle shaking of the body. Feel the hands touching the legs. Feel the clothing touching the skin on different places. Feel the clothing touches the skin on different places. Feel the head balanced on top. Okay, now bring the feet uh, back together. Okay, now come down to a, a sitting position. We're going to do a couple of head and neck exercises. It's good to have a flexible neck, but you have to be careful if you have had any neck injuries or so on. And just let the hands rest at the edge of the knees. And first, we're going to do head turning. You try to keep the chin level to the floor. And on the in breath, turn your head to the right far as you comfortably can, try to look over your right shoulder and turn your eyes to the right as far as you can to look a little bit more behind you on the side. Hold the tension and twist on the out breath, turn the head 180 degrees back. To the left, try to look over the left shoulder. Turn your eyes to the left. And again, in breath, back to the right. Out breath, left. Just concentrate into the neck vertebrae. Imagining them loosening up like squirting oil between the neck vertebrae. In breath, back to the right. Out breath, left. On the in breath, let the head stop in the center. Just close the eyes, just feel the whole body. Just feel the subtle vibrations in the body. Next, we're going to do stretching the head backward and forward. And still keeping the hands at the edge of the knees. On an in-breath, lift the chin up and stretch the head back. Feel the air coming into the upper lungs. And gently lift the head up and on the out-breath, press the chin to the top of the chest to feel all the air go out. Again, in breath, lift the head up and back. And 
Lift the head up, out breath, chin to the chest. Once more, in breath, lift the head up and back. Out breath, chin to the chest. And on the in breath, lift the head up level to the floor, just relax. Feel the whole body. Be aware of the sitting, sitting, present moment of the body. And now we want to do head rolling. If you have a stiff neck or any cricks in the neck, you have to be careful when you're doing this to kind of go the, around or through them the best you can. <clears throat> And it starts by pressing the chin to the chest and going from right to left to left. So on the in breath, gonna roll the head around and the back of the head around the back, back top of the shoulders, making kind of a circular movement until the chin gets over the left shoulder and pause for a moment. And then let out the breath and let the, the chin kind of head dangle back down Repress the chin to the chest and do it again. In breath from right to left. You might hear some sound in the neck vertebrae as they're turning. Out breath, relax the head down. And once more from right to left. Out breath. You know, three times in the other direction from left to right. So the in breath. Pausing over the right shoulder, out breath. And in breath. Out breath. Again, in. Out. Just feel the whole body present moment, awareness. You feel those vibrations all over the body. Okay, now slowly unfold your legs and stretch them out. And then lay down on your back and rest a moment. Just feel the weight of the body pressing the floor. Just have your arms on the floor by your sides, the feet fairly close together. Just feel the weight of the body pressing the floor. And just be aware of, just remember the, the present posture of laying, laying, laying. And we're going to do a combination of the sit up and the forward stretch, again using the rhythmic breathing. You may have to turn your head and look at the screen to see me if you haven't seen this before. On an in-breath, you sit up, 
As you're sitting up, bring the hands together at the chest and you stretch them over the head all on one slow in-breath. And on the out-breath, touch the hands to the chest first and then reach forward to try to touch your toes and to stretch forward. Try to let the bones in the lower spine kind of stretch out if they can, keep the legs straight. And on the in-breath, again, sit back up, bring the hands together at the chest and over the head. And on the out-breath, hands to the chest and lay back down, keeping your hands on the chest until the end. And then let the hands come to the floor. Very beautiful stretching movement. And again, on the next in-breath, sit up. Hands to the chest, over the head. Out breath, touch the chest, stretch forward. Try to stretch forward a little more. And in breath, sit back up, hands to the chest, over the head. Out breath, touch the chest, lay back down. And once more, in breath, sit up, hands to the chest, over the head. Out breath, touch the chest, stretch forward. This time, hold on to your feet with the hands. Try to keep the legs straight if you can. <clears throat> and then on an in-breath, lift the head up and back as though you want to sit up, but you can't because your hands are fixed to the feet. And try to straighten the spine and lift the head up. Turn the eyes up to look toward the ceiling. And on the out breath, relax downward. Let the head come down and forward. Try to stretch forward a little more. Just repeat that two more times. In breath, lift the head up and back to pull against the hands, straighten the spine, lift the head up. Out breath, relax down. And stretch a little bit more forward. And once more, breathe in, lift the head up and back. The out breath. This time, try to stretch forward a little more and hold that position as long as you can. Try to imagine those lower bones in the lower lumbar vertebrae or the, uh, in the sacrum, the small bones that used to be a tail, you know, fused together normally. Imagine them stretch out. Feel all the sensations. And then when you're ready, on an in-breath, sit back up, hands to the chest, over the head. And the out-breath, hands to the chest, lay back down. Just relax, feel the whole body pressing the floor.
Be aware of laying, laying. Now we're going to do an exercise that helps to strengthen the abdomen and uh, balancing on the tailbone. May be difficult for some of you, but see if you can try it. It's a very good exercise. On an in breath, begin sitting up and lift both legs at the same time and try to come up balancing on the tailbone and extend your hands out so your fingers touch your shins. Ideally, the feet should be up level with your eyes. And then carefully lower down on the out breath so the feet and the head touch the floor about the same time. Again, in breath, come up. Try to find that balancing point on the tailbone. Out breath. And the third time when you come up, you try to hold on to the legs as far forward toward the ankles as you can and hold that position longer if you can. The in breath. Try to get a good grip on your legs or ankles. Try to keep the legs fairly straight. Try to find that balance point on the tailbone and then hold that position longer. Don't roll backwards. Because you have the prana energy moving from your feet down to the base of the spine and from your head down to the base of the spine at the same time, colliding at the base of the spine. Once you find that balance point, actually it's quite comfortable to stay there. Try to straighten the legs a little bit if the knees are still bent. And when you can't hold it any more than Gently go back down to the floor. Relax, feel that energy in the solar plexus, abdomen area. Now the last exercise is a, a counter exercise for the forward bending. It's good to then do some back arching to arch the spine in the opposite way. So bring your heels up toward the buttocks as far as you can and reach down and try to hold on to your ankles. If you can't reach your ankles, then just let the hands lay flat on the floor. And it's better if you can hold on to your ankles. And stretch the head out, the neck out flat on the floor. And on an in-breath, you want to lift the hips 
off the floor and arch upwards as much as you can. The head may go back a little bit along the floor, it's okay. On the out breath, gently lower the hips back down to the floor. It's one of the bridge exercises. Again, in breath, lift the hips up, arch upwards. Out breath. Once more, try to hold that bridge posture a little longer. And come down. And stretch the head out, or excuse me, stretch your feet out and lay flat on the floor, completely relax. And now we're gonna just do a little relaxation awareness. You could say laying meditation. So just get the body comfortable with the floor. Just let your arms lay on the floor by your sides, the palms facing downward. Keep the legs together, maybe the heels a couple inches apart. Just feel the weight of the body pressing the floor. And start at the back of the head and work down toward the heels, feeling those body contact points. So just focus where the back of your head presses the floor, just feel that spot. Again, that's the earth vibration, sensation of hardness or solidness. Just feel the sensations in that spot where the back of the head presses the floor. Now let the awareness move downwards a little to feel your shoulder blades pressing the floor. That earth vibration. Now feel your elbows pressing the floor. Just feel the right and the left one, little sensation. Also just remember laying, laying. And feel your fingers and thumbs pressing the floor. And feel the outline of each finger and thumb. The subtle sensations in the finger.
And let the awareness continue moving down to feel your hips or your buttocks pressing the floor. In a contact, solid contact, earth element vibration. And let the awareness continue moving down to feel your legs pressing the floor, especially the calf muscle, the lower leg, thick flesh of the calf muscle pressing the floor. While doing this, if you feel any tension in the body, just relax, still those areas to relax. If the mind is anxious, also tell the mind to relax. Just feel the present moment, subtle vibration. And feel the heels pressing the floor. And let the awareness kind of just move down through the whole feet. Feel the whole foot and then the toes. Just feel those fine and subtle and pleasant sensations in your feet. And again, just remember laying, laying, laying. Now from the toes, let the awareness kind of Go back up through the body and then try to feel the outline of the whole body. Just try to set up whole body laying awareness. Kind of feeling just the outline of the laying body in the mind's eye. Feeling all those contact points in the back of the body kind of simultaneously in one kind of inward observation. The laying body. Just feel any other sensations that are just coming and going and the laying body, just the breathing, maybe the heart beating, or the pulse of blood. Or any itching or prickling sensation. Kind of just feel or imagine the gravity, you know, just pulling the body into the floor. Just keep remembering laying, laying. Laying, 
and tune in to the, open up to that organic aliveness of the whole body. It's being the vibration of the cells interacting with each other. The cells, the molecules, and even the atoms which comprise the cells of the body. This body essentially is just condensed energy. Okay, now begin some three-part breathing again. It's very easy and beautiful to do three-part breathing, laying down. And just try to take three or four seconds to draw the air from the lower lobes up to the middle to the top of the chest and hold the air in the lungs two or three seconds if you can. To feel that, that pause and the subtle sensations of oxygenating blood and feeling the relaxing contractions of the out breath. Just feel the movement of the lower, middle, and upper chest like the waves rolling on the ocean. On the in breath. And on the out breath, imagine the waves coming in to the shore, breaking on the shore, and the tide washing up a bit, and then it rushes back out on the next in breath. Try to take several deep, slow breaths like that. Feeling that deep relaxation, especially on the out breath. You might even hear the sound of the breath going in and out. And when you get tired of that deep, slow breathing, three-part breathing with the next out breath, just completely relax. Don't try to control the breath any longer. Just feel that deep present moment, awareness centered in the body. And the mental stillness.
be aware of any sounds that may be coming and going in your house or around where you live. Just feel that inner vibration of the inner nature, the inner body sensations. At the same time, be aware of any sounds that might be coming and going outside or any thoughts coming through the mind. And now gently flex your fingers and toes, get the blood circulation to come back to some more activity. Then again, take a, a few breaths and do some head turning. On an in-breath, turn your head to the right, bring the chin down towards the right shoulder. And on the out breath, turn the head all the way back to the left to try to touch the chin toward the left shoulder. Let's continue that two more times in breath to the right. Out breath, left. In breath, right. Out breath, left. On the in breath, let the head stop in the center. Now on the next in breath, raise your hands over the head. And on the out breath, lay the arms on the floor behind you, if you can, and stretch the whole body. So stretching the arms and hands backward and the legs downward. Just hold that total body stretch. Just feel all the sensations. And then lift the arms up and then slowly lower them down until you can gradually kind of sit up. So let them come down towards your legs and then sit up. And then one more time, bring the hands to the chest and over the head. And once more, the forward stretch. Hold that a little longer. You can sit up on an in-breath, but don't lay back down. Okay, now, Without much ado, if you can, just try to bring your legs into any cross-legged position. We're gonna do a short sitting meditation. Quite short, maybe only about uh, <clears throat> 10 minutes. And if you need to sit in a chair, you can, but uh, it's good to try to, you know, Take up a meditation position. So it's good after doing the yoga to, to do a period of meditation, to take the advantage of having the mind relaxed and centered in the body. 
You can just gently close the eyes. So you keep the back and the head straight. You feel the body grounded to the floor. Feel your feet and toes tucked underneath. Just be aware that now you're sitting. Sitting, sitting. Feel your hands and fingers touching. Feel the arms hanging from the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. Try to feel the clothing touching the skin in different places, on your shoulders, the chest, the arms. And feel the head balanced on top of the neck. Feel some sensations on your face. Feel where the lips touch together. Feel the tongue laying in the mouth, the moist saliva. Just feel the raw sensations. Feel if the teeth are touching together, or the gums. Now feel the eyes in the sockets and the eyelids stretched over the eyeballs. You might see some color or light or just darkness behind the eyes. From that point behind the eyes, you can just try to feel the outline of the sitting body. The alert sitting body. And then again, begin some do some three-part breathing to feel that dynamic and expanding and contracting of the breathing process. And hold the air in the lungs for three or four seconds if you can to feel that subtle energy of the oxygenating blood or just to feel the present moment awareness.
as you feel that air coming into the upper part of the lungs and chest, that nice expansion. You feel the relaxing contractions of the out breath. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Let's try to continue that three part breathing a few more rounds. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Try to feel the whole breath body within the larger sitting body. Contemplating the body in the body. And at some point when you feel tired of doing the deep, slow breathing, then on the next out breath, just let the breathing alone, discontinue any controlling the breath, just letting the breathing return to its uncontrolled patterns. Just rest in that inner stillness. Just keep the attention on the, the subtler movements in the center of the body. Just knowing when the breath is coming in and knowing when the breath is going out. Knowing by feeling it. By being awake. Grounded, centered in the body. Feeling other sensations around the breathing. Maybe some aches or pains. The breathing is softly moving in the middle. Just letting the thoughts kind of float in and out, float by without grasping them. Just thought bubbles coming and going through the space of the breathing body.
with each out breath, feel the body and mind relaxing more and more into the present moment. Feeling subtler, finer, sensations, vibrations deep in the body, mind. The subtler thoughts moving through the back of the mind. Be alert for any hindrances arising, applying the appropriate countermeasures, antidotes to overcome or let go of the distraction. Keep coming back to reground center in the subtle breathing body. Feel that vibration in the body and mind, what perceptions or thoughts it generates. suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. 
May the grieving be free from grief. In this way, may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom. Now to finish the meditation and finish with chanting the sound sadhu three times slowly. Whenever you do something good for your body and mind, it's good to recognize, acknowledge that sadhu is a word that kind of recognizes that. Take a deep breath. So your hands at the edge of the knees and take one more deep slow breath while stretching the head back pull against the hands at the knees to arch back a little more and lift the head up and on an out breath press the chin to the top of the chest Stretch the neck vertebrae. You lift the chin up level to the floor on the in breath. On the out breath, relax. Put a smile on your face. Okay, friends, uh, I knew that was a kind of a shorter meditation than normal, but because we had the other, the longer yoga session, uh, I didn't want to go too much over uh, four o'clock time. Uh, but I hope uh, that you were able to, you know, see the benefit or feel the, the benefit, especially of that three part breathing and how it can, you can uh, integrate that into your meditation practice, especially like, uh, and before you meditate to, to do a few of those coordinated uh, bending and stretching exercises. And then even when you start meditation to do some three part breathing and try to gradually extend the uh, length of your breath and the time you hold it in, but you have to do it very, uh, gradually not straining at it but it can be a good way to to start the meditation period and if any time later on during the meditation you uh, you know you have sleepiness or too many thoughts you come back and even doing one or two of those three-part breaths is an excellent way to kind of just reground and center the mind and in the body uh, so I encourage uh, people to, you know, to try to work with that and uh, use that as a help uh, in your meditation. 
So uh, we don't have any uh, more time for the questions and answers, but uh, you know, most of you, or you know, are come back and attend the programs either once or twice a week, so on some of the other sessions where we have uh, questions and answers uh, session. Then uh, I don't have my computer with me to see any, if there's any questions that came up onto the chat, I'd have to rearrange the whole thing. And, uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, I wish you all the best and uh, this has been recorded. So uh, you can always listen to it again after a few days, hopefully it will be up uh, on the YouTube. There might be a little bit of some delays with that, but uh, um, otherwise we'll see you back on either Wednesday or next Sunday again. Okay, so wishing you all the best you. Of, uh, this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Well, you're, you're all very welcome, and thank Bhaskar for helping to uh, monitor the, the meeting room and so on. Uh, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. Obrigado. Muito obrigado. Yes. Thank you. Just remember, mindfulness a day keeps dukkha away. Sutta a day keeps confusion away. Yoga a day keeps stiffness away. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you, Bandi. Oh, I just. just up mm -hmm. about uh i'm just now uh, you know gonna i'm gonna plan to have a uh thanksgiving holiday retreat in november i think that's november uh, thursday november 26th to sunday november 29th and it's going to be both an in-person in-house retreat for those who live fairly nearby the area, if you want to come and actually stay here for the few days, uh, meditating, we still you know, try to keep the social distancing. And you know, we've already had two of those before. Uh, six or eight people came, and uh, you know, it went all right. Or it, it's also going to be on the the Zoom. So, uh, especially the afternoon session, each of those days, like when I give a Dhamma talk. And guided meditation from two to about four, uh, then you can join that. And I might even add a, a morning session or the yoga session. So I haven't re figured all that out yet, but this is just a kind of a, a little heads up uh, for those who can mark, you know, mark it on your calendar. If you, uh, you know, say you won't forget it or make some plan to, you know, to do something else on that weekend, perhaps if you have, you couldn't remember all this. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'll send out more information on our weekly mm -hmm. newsletter and on our uh, website about that, too. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Bhante. Did one Saturday night? Did one Saturday night, for those who don't know that phrase, it's a, the Pali phrase of the Buddhists. Is, <laughs> may the, the triple gem bless you. That means the Buddha, Dhamma, mm -hmm. Sangha. The blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and the teaching practice to bring you uh, health and happiness and light, light the path, or however, however you want to uh, reflect on it. Okay? So, Thank you. Okay, bye. See you again. Thank Namo you. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Goodbye. Goodbye. Next Sunday.
thank you for the time uh, exiting now does it uh, end the session because i'm a co-host or i couldn't hear you uh, if i exit now bante does it uh, close the session or uh, because i you can end the session yeah okay. thank you bante i'll do that too